Greetings to you. Thank you for joining us today at Rivers of Living Water Cathedral, 604 Holland Street in Fremont, Ohio. I know God's word will be a blessing to you. Join me now in hearing what God has placed upon Apostle Dr. Robert L. Jones for us today. Thank you, Reverend Julia. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless everybody in the house on today. This is definitely the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice. I choose to rejoice and be glad in this and it. Like Steve Harvey says when he when his program starts, we have another good one for you today. Amen. So in God's word, we have another good one for you today. The title of today's message to you all is Because You Are Worth It to God. Look at someone and tell them, because you are worth it to God. Because, because you are worth it to God. Sister Jones is coming at this time, and she's going to read um, the verses that pertains to this morning's message. And she's going to be reading from two different translations, uh, from King James, and she's going to also be reading from the Passion Bible. And she will be reading Psalms, the 8th chapter. And again, our title today is Because You Are Worth It to God. From the King James Version, the 8th division of Psalms, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest fill the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? But thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. In the Passion Translation, Psalms, the eighth chapter. For the pure and shining one set in the melody of for the Feast of Harvest by King David. Yahweh, our sovereign God, your glory streams from the heavens above, filling the earth with the majesty of your name. People everywhere see your splendor. You have built a stronghold by the songs of children. Strength rises up from the chorus of infants. This kind of praise has power to shut Satan's mouth. Amen. 
Amen. Childlike worship will silence the madness of those who oppose, oppose you. Amen. Look at the splendor of your skies, your creative genius glowing in the heavens. When I gaze at your moon and your stars, mounted like jewels in the settings, I know you are the fascinating artist who fashion it all. But I have to ask this question. Why would you bother with puny mortal man or care about human beings? Yet what honor you have given to men, creating only a little lower than Enoch, crowned with glory and magnificence. You have delegated to them rulership of all you have made, with everything under their authority, placing earth itself under the feet of your image bearers. Hmm. All created order and every living thing of the earth, sky, and sea. The wildest beasts and all that move in the paths of the sea. Everything is in submission to Adam's sons. Mm. Yahweh, our sovereign God, your glory streams from the heavens above, filling the earth and the majesty of your name. People everywhere see your splendor. Amen. Wow. Again, <laughs> because you are worth it to God. And the King James, again, it reads from the third verse, When I consider thy heaven, the work of thy finger." the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Verse 4. Question. What? What? What is man? And the passion. What's this thing? This puny thing? That in so many people's view doesn't even begin to amount to the other things that you did when you look at the vastness of the heavens and, and the galaxies and those when to ask what what is man that thou art so mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him verse 5 for Thou have made him in your image, yet a little lower than angels or Elohim. What is he that you would crown him with glory and honor? Give him the dominion that you gave him. O oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Your name is excellent in all the earth, but, 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 as I see the many disappointments that man have brought you. How is it that you love him so much? How, I'm trying to understand that, Lord. What, what's it about him that you just love him so much? How is it that you love him even to the point of the cost of redemption by your only son. Is man really worth that much to you? So what is 
beautiful man, but God that your mind is always forever on him. You are Yahweh, the only true and wise God, and even the little puny Bobby Jones knows that no one will pay something that is not worth the price. Is man really worth the price to, to you? I would not pay anything that's not worth the price. Why? Then would you pay the price? Are you really, are we really, are we really worth it to you, God? Are we really worth it to you? Now, with all of that said and with my questions asked, I believe God will echo back to us. Yes! Yes! To me, you are worth every drop of my son's blood. Every strike on Jesus. Tell me you're worth it. Yes, you're worth the piercings that my son took. You're worth all of his agony. Sometimes the priest king sings the song, How can you love me after all the things I've done? But you still love me, and you gave your only son. Who or what? Are we that you love us just that so hard? God, you have hard love for us. Think about things that you would not put up with anyone that would do even certain things to you and still. What we've done against God. God said, uh, I, I, I can't help it. I got the love. Help can't help it. I gotta love you. I, 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 God said, I can't help myself. I love you that much. There is a Hebrew word, goel. G O E L, goel. Which means the kinsman's redeemer. That is what Jesus Christ became to us. Let me explain a little bit of this. A male relative who, according to various laws of the, uh, of the Pentateuch, have the privilege or responsibility to act on the behalf of a relative who was in trouble, danger, or need. He would be the goel or the kinsman's 
Redeemer, the designated one who delivers or rescues, that is referenced, that understanding is referenced in Genesis, the 40th chapter, and Exodus, the 6th chapter, and Leviticus, the 25th chapter, and Leviticus, the 27th chapter, and the and also in the total book of Ruth that deals with the Goel, the kinsman's redeemer. The book of Ruth, the kinsman who redeems or vindicates a a relative is indicated in the book of Ruth, a kinsman um, who redeems or vindicates a relative is illustrated most clearly. Now I won't go through the whole story. I'm going to hit bits and pieces of the story. Boaz, Boaz in that story is the kinsman's redeemer the story of Ruth and Boaz began when Ruth and her mother-in-law, Naomi, returns to Bethlehem from Moab, uh, where uh, they had been living. And that's in the where... Uh, her husband dies. Naomi's husband dies. And one of the sons of Naomi that was married to Ruth dies, and the other son dies. Okay? Now, Leaving the women penniless and without any protection. Now, upon arriving in Bethlehem, long story short here, Naomi sends Ruth to glean in a field owned by Boaz. A very, very wealthy relative of Naomi. And through this, there are a series of divinely appointed circumstances. And Boaz becomes their Goel. A kinsman redeemer. Even to the point that Boaz willingly takes Ruth as his wife. And together they bear a son named Obed. Whom became the grandfather of King David. The forefather of Jesus. Oh, my, my, my. Now, Yahweh, God, Yahweh is Israel's redeemer, the one who promises to defend and vindicate Israel. But we find in the New Testament, Jesus is regarded as our example. <laughs> of a kinsman redeemer, hallelujah, because as our eldest brother, Hebrews 2 and 11, he redeems us because of our great need, he redeems us. We can't get ourselves out of any trouble. We can't help ourselves. 
He agrees. Jesus agrees to be the Goel. For us, He was and is the only one who could satisfy the price and cost of redemption. In Ruth 3 and 9, we see a beautiful picture of a needy supplicant, unable to rescue herself, requesting of the kinsman redeemer that he covers them with his protection. He redeems her and makes her his wife. You should read the whole book of Ruth sometime. It's one of the most beautiful stories. Now in the same way, the Lord Jesus redeems us for the Father from the curse. He redeems us out of our destitution. Adam's sin, Eve's sin, left us destitute. No help. No covering. But Jesus delivers us out of our destitution, even making us huh, his beloved bride to be. And blessing us for all generations. He is the true Goel, kinsman's redeemer of all who call on him in faith. Hallelujah. Because to him we were worth the price he paid to satisfy his father. The kinsman redeemer would get her, <laughs> Ruth, out of poverty, prov provided for her by her back, by any property back, so that it could be kept in the family. Now, I don't want to get into it because it would take a little bit too deep, but there was a time of buyback. Oh, my, my, my. And if buyback wasn't done within a seven-year period, listen, listen. It could become the property forever of the one that for every reason that owned the property. So there was a crucial time for by that. There's a time that That Jesus got to come. Yes, 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 yes. To meet the time for the redemption of everything. Glory to God. Not just you, but everything. Amen, amen, amen. If it's not bought back in a certain time, then even the earth becomes the property of the enemy. Oh, my, my, my. But the Lord knows the time that everything
very thing. Not just our, our, our soul, but everything that, my God, fell into the hands of the enemy, there is a by that time. So Jesus just, just took care of the first part. By God. The most important part, me and you, we're worth it. See, if a person was even sold in slavery because of their debt, the Kisman Redeemer could buy their freedom. This is what Boaz does for Ruth and Naomi. She is redeemed from a bleak future into a bright future. Why? Huh. Boaz saw that she and Naomi was worth it. My God. Now, when you read the story, you'll find out that there was another person involved in there that was even a higher relative oh, no, 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 than Boaz. But that higher relative did not want all of that resp responsibility. So it went to the next uh, to the next relative of highest relationship, which is which was Boaz. Let me close the story. The same as Jesus knowing that we were worth it to the Father, he pays the price to buy us back out of the horror of sin and hell into an everlasting, glorious life in Christ Jesus. And, and eternal home in heaven with our heavenly father yes Jesus was our help me say go well go well, go well. in closing no matter what people say about you how no good that you are how this how that God says I don't know what they talk talking about because they're worth it for me. They're worth it. I know, I can hear all the, God saying all the put downs and all this and all that, but, 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 but they're worth it to me. Yes, Jesus paid the price for you through his death, burial, and resurrection. Why? Because simply to the Father you were worth it to him. Even with your repeated practices of failure and sin, you are still worth it to Him. So worth it until God gave His very, very, very which was his son. And his son gave all that he had, which was his life. All for what? All to redeem you back to the Father because to the Father what? You were simply worth it. So stop acting like a low belly nothing that Satan wants you to act and live like and declare your position yes. as a son and daughter of the Most High. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. No, I'm not talking about pride and boasting in yourself. 
am talking about acting like a faith-filled, redeemed child in the body of Christ. Living in and up to the potential that God bestowed on you. You see, as you are now, 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 seated together with Jesus Christ in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Because God saw you were worth it. Yes, in spite of every negative thing that you have ever done and still do, forever, God declares, you are worth it to Him. The evangelist table is coming at this time and she's going to recite the words of one of the songs that the praise team sing. Yes. To end this message, she will recite. Lord, you thought I was worth it. You thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping, so you cleansed me up inside. You thought I was worth to die for, so you sacrificed your life. So I can be free, so I can be whole, so I can tell everyone, Lord, you thought I was worth. <laughs> Thank you, evangelists. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Friend us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be notified every time that we post. Those who live in the Fremont, Ohio area are invited to come on Wednesday evening at 8 or at 6.30 for a time of studying God's word and building your foundation in him. Or come next Sunday morning for a time of family worship at 10 a.m. We're located at 604 Holland Street in Fremont. Intercessory prayer warriors, faithfully take every request to the Lord. Send your prayer request or financial blessing to us at Post Office Box 1323, Fremont, Ohio, 43420. You can also go to our website, rolwohio.com, where you can contact us through email, you can link to any social media post or link to our PayPal account. We look forward to hearing from you. And remember, there is no, no God, God like our God, God nowhere. nowhere.